together, then we see things begin to happen. Our faith will give us strength. When we see our brother and sister in God facing a battle and standing strong and come through it, our faith rises up. It increases our faith. And we know we can overcome any, any battle that we have to, that we have to face. Amen. The helmet of salvation. Mm -hmm. Roman soldiers wore a helmet made of thick leather covered with metal plates or heavy molded and beaten metal. The purpose of the helmet was to protect the head from injury. There are all types of different helmets, helmets used in sports today. So many different uh, sports sports organizations don't worry about concussions anymore. So they're going to the extreme to try to protect uh, an athlete's head, if you will. But we as Christians, it seems that we're bombarded all the time with negative thoughts, ne negative words, ne negative things in our life. very important that you understand this one. That's, that's, to me, that's one of his main tricks that he will give us to do. If he can get us to thinking that, that it's true, Brother Ross, even though it isn't, then he has a foot in the door. This is where he'll play most of his tricks at. Brother Gil told us about holiness, and he said holiness begins in the mind. It's very important that we guard our mind. This is a very important piece of armor. It seems that we're bombarded with many negative things, but our minds are the handiwork of God. He, he, he made us. If the devil can plant seeds of doubt in our mind, he will cause us to question God. We're, we're, we're bombarded with many, many different negative things. And if he can get us to think something's true, then he's got us. Philippians 2 and 5 says, Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. The helmet of salvation is very, very important. Very important. You know what we've got? Romans 1, 28 through 32. I'm going to read right quick. It says, Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. Your knowledge comes from your mind. What you learn, what you know. God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, and covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, just thinking up all kinds of evil things, all kinds of bad things, disobedient to parents. Without understanding covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasures in them that do them. This is the kind of world that we live in today. It's just like I said earlier, men's hearts are on evil continually in Genesis 6, and it is the same way today. The helmet of salvation. Salvation is the redemption of man from sin, the knowledge that we have that Jesus Christ died so that you and I have the promise of eternal life. The helmet of salvation protects us from the blows of lies, the blows of fears, doubts, and the temptation that the enemy will throw at us. The helmet of salvation. Our next and last piece that I want to speak about before I close is the sword of of the Spirit, which is, as I said, it is the Word of God. The Roman soldiers used a sword called a mariaco, which, which varied in length from 6 to 18 inches, and it was sharpened on both sides, and it would cut going in, and it would cut, cut coming out with a rake. It was very, very deadly. It was carried in a sheath on the belt, so it was close at hand, and it was ready, ready to use. And I think it's amazing that Paul list the five defensive weapons and one offensive weapon, but it can also be a, a, deep, a defensive weapon. That's the Word of God which shows us just how powerful the Word of God really is. It's very, very important. Jesus said in Matthew 24, 35, He said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my scripture, but my word shall not pass away. 2 Timothy 3, 16 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for 
instruction in righteousness. And that, that word inspiration that it speaks about comes from a word that means it's God breathed. God breathed it out. God said that thing. The very spirit of God directed and profited 40 men over a period of 1,600 years to write the word of God that you and I have today. And there, there's, there's, there's no confusion in it. It all meshes really well together. Hebrews 4 and 12 says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing center of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and of the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Jesus used the word of God to defeat the tempter in the wilderness. In Matthew chapter 4, he spoke the word to him. Our knowledge of the word of God is vital in our walk with him, knowing what the Bible says. Psalms 119, 105 says, Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light unto my path. It can lead us and guide us. It directs us. Romans 15 and 14 says, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Paul ends by saying, Prayer always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching there to all perseverance and supplications for all saints. For all saints. Will you stand with me right now? I don't know what I felt. I, I know this is kind of lengthy and I had a lot to say and a lot of things to cover, but I felt that it was very important. And uh, I've got a copy of this if anybody would like to have a copy of it. i got a copy of the PowerPoint that I can, that I can download to a flash drive. But it's very important that we know that we're in a battle. And that the enemy would like to take us out, if you will. And he would like to destroy us. We become strong in the Lord and the power of his might when we have on the whole armor of God. And I really, I really feel like somebody needed to hear that this morning. If you're battling depression or if you're battling dependence upon something, whatever it is that you're battling in, in life, we can accomplish all things through Jesus Christ, which gives us strength. There are strongholds that the enemy places in our life to bind us and to defeat us. And I feel it's important for us to remember the weapons that God has given us because we're living in the last days. i got one last thing I want to read to you. It's called Spiritual Warfare. It's, it's a point. It says, I had a battle fierce today right in the place of prayer. I went to meet and talk with God, but I found Satan there. He whispered, you can't really pray. You lost out long ago. You might say words while on your knees, but you can't pray, you know. So then I pulled my helmet tight, way down upon my ears, and found it helped to steal his voice and help allay all my fears. I checked my other armor over. My feet in peace were shod. My loins with truth still girded around. My sword the word of God. My righteous breastplate still on my heart. Love to protect. My shield of faith was all intact. His fiery darts to deflect. My courage mounted up afresh as I gripped the new my sword. Oh, Satan, get behind, I cried. Oh, glory, praise the Lord. And against his darts came thick and fast. Faith twitched and put them out. And while he raised a new attack, I raised the victory shout. I call on God in Jesus' name, and I pressed the, I pled the precious blood while Satan snuck away in shame. I met and I talked with God in prayer. Let's all come and just pray for a few minutes. Let's just all come here with the Lord right now this time.
I can get this head out of here long now. Praise the Lord. I'm sure you enjoyed that. Don't we got to have a shield of faith in one before? Uh, on March 27, 2016, which is Easter Sunday, our annual Easter dinner at the New Madrid Community Building at 1 p.m. Everyone is invited to attend. Our church family, your extended family, all Sunday morning visitors. The meat and the bread will be furnished by the church. The rest of the meal will be provided by the members of the church, potluck style time. Please sign the list to let us know what you will bring, what you will be bringing. You need to try to bring enough of whatever you bring to feed 10 people. I guess if you have any questions, you can see Sister Jenny, she kind of get this all together. Sign the list back there if you need some changes or something on it. Somebody might have to bring something to the what they originally planned. If everybody wants to bring chicken and dumplings, that's all we have. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess if everybody brought along, yes, I would have. It. But it all be good. And, uh, you know, this week, Brother Bill been gone. Last Sunday, I was sick. I didn't to go to the nursing home meeting. And I understand there was quite a bit going on at the nursing home meeting. Everybody enjoyed it. And so, just to get a little review of what went on at the nursing home Sunday. We're going to give Sister Kim a chance to fill us in. <laughs> so, Sunday was nursing home service, and uh, we got Pastor Gerard Jones. And it was so amazing to just witness this group when there really is no way God will make a way. Forever, He will make a way. And then that sweet lady got to finish her salvation. She needed to live. She's ready to go meet her Lord. It was just so touching, and then afterwards she looked at me and she said, well, I guess we're sisters now. <laughs> well, we've been sisters for a while. <laughs> she got back to bed, and she was so tired, and so we you know, she said, I'm sorry I'm not going to go to church. I'm like, it's fine, it's fine, you know, go to bed, it's not a big deal. And I was there to see you 10 minutes later, you're not going to come to church anyway. I just thought, how many of us don't even try to go? And it's such a blessing to them people, I mean, just, it just really touched my heart. So, thank you. Thank you. And, you know, we had something else special that went on this weekend. And we had one baptized another, and we're going to let Sister Maria tell us a little bit about that. Well, <laughs> first thing in the morning, I texted Sister Judy, and she called the Sister Maria, and she wanted to baptize. She has been that time, but she was such a little child, she could not remember. It was such a serious thing. I can understand why you want to remember something. So, that's so significant, you know. So, I jumped up and Sister Judy and we got down here and Sister Judy took a joke, jumped in the water. <laughs> Y'all, I want some <laughs>
But the announcement for this week, prayer meeting every Monday night, 6.30 p.m., new convert class follow. Sunday school drive. For each visitor you bring, your name goes in the drawing. On Easter, a winner will be drawn for $500 prize. And I can see that that's going pretty good because our numbers have been up real good. And uh, back there in the back where the name's been dropped in, there's a ton of names in there. And I can't wait till Easter to find out who gets that $500. It might be the one that brought about 25, or it might be the one that just brought one. I think that's pretty neat right there. So that way everybody gets rewarded for something they did. And uh, on March the 13th, it will be this next week. You know, March is gonna be our spirit month here, so I think they look crazy now. Next week is Nerves and Crazy Hair Day. Man, I've had some crazy hair across my time. And March the 20th will be Beat Up the Devil Sunday. Bandages, black eyes, crutches, etc. Man, I thought we was beating him up, not him us. <laughs> and then the men's crawfish ball, ball is April 16th, $30 each. Exceed Conference is March the 10th through 12th in Still, Missouri. March 19th is Leadership Planning Session at 5 p.m. If you've been in the leadership group and taking these lessons over here, now it's time to come put your stuff to use. So we all really need to be at that planning session so we can all have a say in, in what's going forward for the rest of the year. Ladies' conference is April 28th through 30th, and right now it's birthday offering time. I think we had some, so this is birthday month here, March is. Is this the anniversary or birthday? Oh, it's birthday? Anybody else? Is that a birthday or anniversary? Okay. Is that another one? She's been working out the nursing home. She's getting a little slow. <laughs>